Welcome back to my channel. My name is Katie. This is Life Between Words. Today we're going to talk a little bit more about middle grade March and first some housekeeping or reminders about the readathon. Krista from Books and Jams and I are hosting a readathon in the month of March called Middle Grade March and it's simply a readathon encouraging people to pick up more middle grade than they normally would. If you read one middle grade book, you are participating. But if you feel so inclined, you are welcome to read as many middle grade books as you want to. In order to facilitate or encourage people throughout the month, Krista and I are going to host a few Instagram Lives. The first Instagram Live is going to be this Wednesday at 8.30 Central Time. That is my time zone. Krista lives on the East Coast. So it's an hour later there. Everyone can figure out their own time zones. And it will be up for 24 hours like a regular Instagram. So if you can't make it, that's okay. You don't need to completely miss out. If you don't have Instagram, that's okay too. You just aren't going to be able to probably to participate in that aspect of the readathon. Our first Instagram Live is going to focus on our TBRs for the month. We were going to talk about what constitutes a middle grade, what, what does middle grade mean, but I think we're going to push that out to the next week because we're going to be doing kind of weekly Instagram lives, same time every week in March. We are giving away a copy of The Girl Who Drank the Moon by Kelly Barnhill, which is our group book for the month. So we are going to announce the winner during our Instagram Live on Wednesday. Once again, if you are not on Instagram, that's okay. We will find you another way, but it's just where we're gonna announce the winner. You have a few more days to sign up for the giveaway. We have a raffle copter set up, which I will link down below if you want to sign up still for the giveaway. I'm really excited to read that book. We're all gonna read it together. And then our last Instagram Live at the end of the month is going to be a book discussion about the Girl Who Drank the Moon. So be sure to sign up for the giveaway, or if not, get yourself a copy if you'd like to read that book along with us. I think that's all I needed to remind you about, so let's get into the discussion today, and that is some middle grade book recommendations. <sighs> this was hard, guys, because I wasn't sure whether I only wanted to recommend books to you that I've read in my life, or whether I just kind of wanted to put some books on your radar, whether or not I've read them. There are five challenges for middle grade March. You don't need to do any of the challenges if you don't want to. They're simply guidelines. But in honor of those challenges, I thought I would focus on recommendations that pertain to each one of the challenges. And I'm going to start out with the books that I've read and own so that I can show them to you. And then we can talk about maybe some of the books that I own that I haven't read, but that I've heard good things about. Let me just run through the challenges again for you real quick. Number one is an award winner. Number two is a book to movie adaptation. Number three is a children's classic. Number four is a childhood favorite. And number five is a diverse book. Obviously, I have not read The Girl Who Drank the Moon, but I'm going to recommend this book again just because it is the book that we're gonna read during the month. It also completes several of the challenges, which it's an award winner and it's also a diverse book because the main character ha is described as having dark skin and curly black hair. I thought it fit three of the challenges, but I think it only fits two of the challenges unless it's going to be made into a movie, but I don't think it is. All right, so these first four books are award winners that I have read. They are all Newbery Medal. When it comes to highly acclaimed children's literature, I pretty much always can count on the Newbery Award. The first is Number the Stars. This is by Lois Lowry. I read this book when I was a little girl, when it first came out, probably. When was this written? Oh, 1989. No, I was a little too young to read it, but it was around when I was a little girl and I read it. This is World War II historical fiction and it takes place in Denmark, I think. Yes. I loved this book when I was little. I haven't read it in years. I actually don't remember a whole lot about it other than that I loved it. The next three I have read in the last few years and I loved all of these. So the first is Neil Gaiman's The Graveyard Book. A lot of you have probably heard of this book. Neil Gaiman is a fabulous writer of adult fiction, but he has taken a foray into children's literature and um, he's written Coraline, which I haven't read, and then also The Graveyard Book, which I have and loved. And this is about a little boy named Bod who is raised by ghosts in a graveyard and it's just a little bit creepy if you're looking for something like that, but not scary and really whimsical and magical, much like a lot of his other adult fiction too. It's very sort of ethereal. Then we have The Witch of Blackbird Pond by Elizabeth George Spear. Um, I didn't read this when I was a kid, but I did read it as an adult just a few years ago, and I really enjoyed it a lot, and it was written in 1958. This is about a girl who goes to live with her aunt and uncle in uh, New England and Connecticut, 
and she befriends a woman named Hannah Tupper, an older woman who lives alone and is the only person who lets Kit be herself. Kit was raised on the island of Barbados. And then Hannah Tupper, I believe, is accused of being a witch. It takes place kind of during the witch hunt scare of the 1600s, I think. And then we also have Moon Over Manifest by Claire Vanderpool, and this is another historical fiction book about uh, a girl named Adeline Tucker. She lives in Kansas and she goes on a little bit of an adventure. Yeah, her father has put her on a train sending her off to live with an old friend for the summer while he works a railroad job. And then she discovers a bit of a mystery and then the book is working out that mystery. I really, really enjoyed this book. I loved Claire Vanderpool's writing. Another award winner that is also a childhood favorite of mine, so this could go in both piles, is Walk Two Moons by Sharon Creech. I loved this book. This book meant so much to me when I was growing up, uh, sort of on the verge of middle school, and Sharon Creech's writing is very whimsical and heartfelt. This is about a young girl named Salamanca who goes on a road trip with her grandparents. She is half Native American, and she's sort of discovering her heritage. She did not grow up among Native American people, so she's kind of an outsider looking in, and that does it does feel like that in the book. I would not call this a diverse pick necessarily because you're not getting the perspective of um, someone immersed in that culture. She really is sort of on the outside looking in. But it is a wonderful story, full of heart. Sharon Creech is an amazing writer. I loved this book and I really, really would love to reread it this month. I'm really going to try and get to it because um, I haven't read it in years and it meant a lot to me when I was young. I also wanted to mention that the Newbery Award winner for 2018 is Hello Universe. This could also work as a diverse pick. It's about four different children. They aren't friends, they don't all go to the same school, but when Chet pulls an unthinkable prank on Virgil and Virgil's pet bin guinea pig, Gulliver, the lives of these four middle schoolers collide in surprising and unexpected ways. So if you're looking for a really recent release um, and an award winner from this year, Hello Universe. I haven't read it yet, but I'm really excited to. Let's move on to book to movie adaptation. So for book to movie adaptations, I first have Tuck Everlasting by Natalie Babbitt. This is a really poignant, beautiful, short little book um, about, a li about a young girl who befriends a boy whose family has drunk from the tree of everlasting life, and so they live forever, they can't die, and she must make a choice at the end of the book about whether she wants to also drink from that same tree and live forever. I did watch the movie and cried like a baby. Another one of my all-time favorite middle grade books is Wonder by R.J. Palacio. This is about a little boy named Augie who has a facial disfigurement. It's congenital and uh, his parents decide to put him in regular public school. He has been homeschooled all his life. It's about him coming of age and adjusting to this new school life. It's also very heartfelt and wonderful, and it was made into a movie this past fall, which I have yet to see. I'd really like to watch that movie. And then finally, another book that was adapted into a movie pretty recently, and that is A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness. This is a beautiful middle grade book about a little boy who is dealing with grief, and a monster comes to visit him every night. And it's not really a warm, fuzzy monster. It, the monster is a little bit unnerving, but he is helping this little boy walk through that pain and it really is very poignant and beautiful and the illustrations in this particular edition are stunning. Let's see if I can... They're just really gorgeous. Alright, let's do some classics. I could also mention Anne of Green Gables. This would be a great time to read Anne of Green Gables if you never have. But some other favorites, one is The Secret Garden. I also have a beautiful copy of Charlotte's Web, which I was going to mention in my childhood favorites, but I'm just going to put it here. A Little Princess, which is also written by Frances Hodg Hodgson Burnett, who wrote The Secret Garden. This is a great one. Heidi is another one that I owned that I loved growing up. Um, actually, I'm not even sure whether I've ever read A Little Princess, but I did see the movie. Another book to movie adaptation, folks. This one I read last year, Skating Shoes, and then there's also Ballet Shoes, both by Noel Stretfield. These are more like modern classics, and they're wonderful. And then finally, we have The Little White Horse by... Um, Elizabeth Googe. This book was J.K. Rowling's favorite book growing up. It's, an, it's a classic, and I believe it also won the Newbery Award. I could be wrong about that, but pretty sure this is my beautiful folio edition. I haven't read this book yet. I'd really like to. This is what I'm going to try to read for the classic in the month of March. 
I'm not even sure that I can tell you what this is about, but I can tell you that it was J.K. Rowling's favorite children's book growing up, and it's a classic. This would be a great choice if you're looking to read a book that has influenced your favorite author. So I'm really looking forward to reading The Little White Horse. I read an Elizabeth Googe book last year and loved it, but this obviously was written for children, and the book I read was written for adults. Okay, childhood favorites. The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe um, by C.S. Lewis. Anne of Green Gables, like I've already mentioned. Matilda was another favorite. This is about a little girl who can move things with her mind. She uses her ability to move things with her mind to play tricks on the terrible adults in her life. There's also a wonderful friendship that she develops with her teacher, Mrs. Miss Honey. And uh, I used to read this book in a day, and then I'd read it again the next day. I loved this book so much. All right, and finally, some diverse books for you. The first is called The Bone Sparrow by Zana Fralian. Freylon. It's about a little boy whose family are refugees and they made it to Australia, but in Australia and in many other places in the world, uh, they are put into basically an internment camp or a waiting camp where they um, await the government to decide where to place them. And in Australia, it can be indefinitely. So this little boy was born in this camp and he's now nine years old. And oftentimes, these conditions are really abysmal. They're not prisoners, they're asylum seekers, but they are treated like prisoners. And so this just sheds light on something that's really serious that's going on in so many places in the world, I'm sure in the United States too. And um, I'm looking forward to reading this, but I know it's gonna just absolutely rip my heart out. This is a book called Forget Me Not by Ellie Terry. This is about a little girl with Tourette syndrome and Ellie Terry has Tourette syndrome herself. So this is an own voices book as well as a diverse pick. Esperanza Rising by Pam You Knows Ryan. This is about a young girl who grew up and was, was growing up in Mexico and then for one reason or another her mother and her have to move to California and they become migrant workers. Then we have Inside Out and Back Again by Tana Lai. Um, this was a National Book Award winner and a Newbery Honor medalist, and this book is written in verse. Oh, so was uh, Forget Me Not, actually, too. I'm sorry, this, this video is all over the place, guys, but this book was written in verse. This is about a young girl who moves with her family from Vietnam after the war to Alabama, and it's about her adjusting to that, and Tana Lai Lay. I'm actually not sure how to pronounce her name. She herself is Vietnamese and has a very similar story. So I don't know how much of this is autobiographical, but it's certainly based on her own experience. And then finally, another new war release. This was a 2017 release. It's called Forever or a Long, Long Time. This is about a pair of siblings who have finally moved from foster care into an adoptive home. I've been reading a lot of books with adoption and foster care as a central theme in the book, and I'm really looking forward to trying this one out. So this is not a book that I've read um, actually, almost all the books that I mentioned for the diverse book are not books that I've read yet, but have been on my shelf for a while. You guys, I have so many more middle grade books to recommend, but I'm just going to leave it at that. If you have any questions or if you would like any other recommendations, feel free to ask me below. Let me know if any of those sound good, if you'll be picking any of them up. I would love to know that as well. Please remember to link your TBR videos or any other middle grade march videos down below and use the hashtag middle grade march across all social media so that we can find each other. I hope you guys are getting so excited for the month of March and to read some middle grade uh, together. I think that's all for now. I hope you guys are having a great day. Bye!